Well, the Albanese government is in damage control again this morning after nearly 150 asylum seekers freed from detention in November were issued invalid visas. Joining us live now, our Wednesday panel, Labor MP Julian Hill, the Liberal MP Keith Wallahan. Julian, uh, oh, good to see you both. Firstly, Julian, to you, another bungle on detainees, it seems. Are you getting sick of them yet? Oh, this is a, a beat up out of proportion. This is a technical issue which was identified in the visas that were issued by the department. It's a technical issue actually that has existed for over a decade as the media reports make clear since 2013 under the former government's term. It's been fixed. There's been no changes to the visa conditions, no changes to the monitoring uh, and it's been resolved. Keith, your thoughts on that? Uh, Keeping people safe and ministers doing their job is not a beat up. It is the number one duty of a government. And time and time again, we have seen the relevant ministers fall short in their duties. And what this comes down to is a government and ministers that were distracted and are distracted. And there's a real question about competence, about whether they are competent enough to do their duties. And that comes back to keeping people safe. Well, yeah, the, the critics have been out for the Immigration Minister, Andrew Giles. Are you, would you be interested in being the Immigration Minister, Julian? You do a better job. Let's pick up on what Keith. Let's keep up. Let's pick up on what Keith said there. If you take that line of logic, then Peter Dutton and Scott Morrison and Karen Andrews were grossly incompetent. I mean, it's ridiculous. The point has been made and the media reports are clear. There's a technical issue in the visas. It's all been resolved mm. and community safety has been the government's number one priority. The mm. Home Affairs Minister, the Immigration Minister at every point have responded to the High Court's decision, put in place a board, sought advice on the appropriate tough conditions on each uh, former detainee and those conditions have been consistently applied. This yeah. is a technical issue and frankly if this is all the opposition's got going for them they weren't a very good government and they're not a very good opposition. But would you like to be immigration minister? Go on Julian. <laughs> I'm very happy very happy <laughs> in my current job and honestly <laughs> it's a tough job. I, it's a tough job. Andrew was a former migration lawyer He's an expert, he knows his patch, and he's a person of enormous integrity and compassion. Right. He's the best guy for the job, okay. and I back him 100%. OK, going back to you, Keith, switching topics now. Incentives will be given to communities to entice them to support nuclear. I had Angus Taylor on the program earlier. He says he's not going to front run on this when I spoke to him about it. But it's there in The Australian this morning, that subsidised electricity prices, upgraded infrastructure and transition packages for workers are being considered... Um, when it comes to a coalition argument for nuclear. So, Keith, is this enough for you to win the debate, do you think? Uh, we've just started the debate and we're trying to have a serious national conversation about the future energy supply of this country as we transition from a coal-based energy source to a reliable non-coal-based energy source. And all of our peers in the world, all of our peers in the G20, have nuclear as part of the mix. And for some reason, Labor don't even want to have this conversation. They want to shut it down, not even have the debate, and are quick to wheel out the quick lines. And I'm sure Julian will have quite a few zingers straight after this that will appear on Twitter <laughs> or X. Um, but, but, but let's actually have the serious conversation. Uh, let's remove the ban. Let's see if the market actually will respond rather than second guess what they'll do. OK. Oh, well, let's go to Julian now on this. And, and, and before you do respond, Julian, there's an interesting claim by Australia's former nuclear science regulator Regulator, again in the Australian today and he was that regulator under both Labor and Liberal governments so he says a domestic nuclear energy industry in this country is the only option if the country wanted a reliable low-cost energy source with zero emissions so why in your view would he be wrong well I'll respond to what Keith said and I saw the reports from Adi Patterson and you know there's been reports Report after report after report, the New South Wales chief scientist, the recent CSIRO report, reports over many years that have said nuclear power in Australia is a fantasy, it's a fiction, it's a fairy tale. But, you know, full marks to the coalition. They were in government for nearly a decade. They had 22 different energy policies over nine years. They ripped three prime ministers to bits, three governments they tore up over their climate wars and failure to actually have a coherent energy policy. But this is a distraction. It is a distraction. Nuclear power, as every report has shown, we've had the serious sober conversation over years in this country. This 
as a distracting trick uh, so people don't focus on the mess that they made in government. It's the most expensive form of new power. It's slow to build. It wouldn't come online for 15 to 20 years, as everyone admits. Uh, the small modular nuclear reactors that they keep talking about don't exist anywhere in the world. They're a, an idea, a proposal. They don't actually exist. And it's not the appropriate form of firming power to complement renewables. Australia right. has the best renewable resources of any developed country in the world. It's the cheapest form of new power, but the Liberals and the Nationals can't get on board. OK, Keith, and just a quick one here, because we've got to go. But what, you, you should, why didn't you do this 10 years ago while you were in government for 10 years? And, and Jackie Lambie, I spoke to her recently about this, and she says you should have. You should have done it 10 years ago if you were serious about nuclear. Oh, look, woulda, coulda, shoulda, but but here we are. We're, we're, we're in opposition. Uh, this is 2024. Technology advances and moves. And, and I think the government are forgetting that they're actually in government. Julian makes a, a great opposition member of parliament. I learn a lot from Julian about how to throw out what about isms, but, but they're in government. They need to engage in the okay. serious task of providing reliable, cheaper power for this country going forward. Julian, Keith, good to chat as always. Well, that's, we'll, that's exactly, we'll, that's exactly what we're doing. Exactly we'll, what we're doing. We'll run this up next week. Thanks, we'll, Keith. Talk Thanks, to you Julian. about soon. Good to have you with us.